Good morning, everybody, and welcome to worship this day on the third Sunday of Easter. It is so good to be with you. We are grateful for you taking the time to join us. Pastor, how are you today? I'm very good. Thank you so much for being with us, and it's great to be hearing the Word of God together today. It sure is. We got a wonderful gospel. But before we get to that, how about we begin with our brief order for confession and forgiveness? Today we begin this service as we seek to live every day in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Amen. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy, have mercy on, on us. us. We, we confess, confess that we have, have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown. Things we have done and, and things we have failed to do. Turn, turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn this day is Alleluia, Jesus is Risen, number 377 in the L-E-L-W.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, your Son makes himself known to all his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading is from the second chapter of Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now, when they had heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So thousands who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about three persons were added. The word of the Lord. Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The psalm today is Psalm 116, verses 1 through 4 and 12 through 19. We will read the psalm responsively. I love the Lord, who has heard my voice, and listened to my supplication. For the, For the Lord, Lord has, has given, given ear, ear to me whenever, whenever I called. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came upon me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then, then I, called I called upon, upon the, the name Lord, of the Lord. O Lord, Lord I, pray I pray you save my life. life. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will lift the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Precious in your sight, O Lord, is the death of your servants. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid, you have freed me from my bonds. I, I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Alleluia. Our second reading is from the first Peter, the first chapter, 17 to 23. If you invoke as Father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with, per with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him, you have come to trust in God who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable but of imperishable seed through the living and enduring word of God, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, you O Lord. Lord. Now on that same day, when Jesus had appeared to Mary Magdalene, two disciples were going to a village called Emmaus about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with him, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, 
What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty indeed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, Pastor, that's a tremendous gospel lesson. I love it. I can't wait to get to it, but I thought we would once again this week take some time and spend a little time with our young ones here. Yeah. Hi, and kids. Hope you're all with us today. It's good to see you all. And I was just thinking, Pastor, you know, I was a little sad this week. Okay. I was a little sad. I'm just going to be honest. I was a little sad because I realized that this is the longest I have ever gone mm. without seeing my grandmother. Oh, now, yeah. I'm not that young myself. Right. So to think, since I was your age, right? Little. I spent all kinds of time with my nanny. Absolutely. And here over these weeks... I have not seen her one time. I can call her mm -hmm. a little FaceTime. I can see her picture, but it's just not the same. Do you not know what I mean? the same, yeah. I so I, I made up a little card I was going to send. And the, I'm not finished with it yet. It's just the start. Work in progress. Yeah, work in progress. Yeah. And the card says, I miss you so much. Have you ever missed anybody? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have uh, two Grammys yeah. at home. Um, one in Mount Pleasant and one in McKeesport, and I miss them a lot. Yeah. It's not easy. It's not easy. It's like it's, it's something in your heart. It's almost like a little bit of an ache. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we try to make the best of it, you know, and I think that maybe, you know, maybe there's another way to look at this, missing somebody. Mm. Yeah. You know what I think about when I say I miss you to someone? Right. It's about how important they are to you. Because you, in fact, are sad when you can't go see them. Right. And so when we say, 
I miss you. I happen to have another little card here because huh. you could say, I miss you so much. Right. But when we say, I miss you, you're also saying, I love you. So oh, much. yes. Yeah. I see that now for yeah. sure. And it's a special type of thing. It is very sad when we can't see someone. But when we say, I miss you, we're also saying, you're very important to me and I love you. So that feeling then, that missing somebody, really is a sign. It's like a signal to me of just how much I love my nanny. Absolutely. So I shouldn't be too, too sad about that. In a strange kind of way, I can almost be thankful that that yeah. is still in my heart. Absolutely, right? that you both love each other so much that in this hard time, uh, we might miss each other, but that love is still always there. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much Absolutely. for clearing that up for me. I really appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Yes. All right, now on to our gospel. Ooh, good one. It is, and uh, I have to say, we'll do our best to, you know, curb our enthusiasm, right, but there's a lot to cover there's here. There's so much in here. A lot to cover here, and the yeah. first thing, just to take it from the very beginning, mm -hmm. um, seven miles, seven miles between Jerusalem and Emmaus. Right. And I appreciate the distance being mentioned, <laughs> Because it gives us the impression, right, that they had a journey. They yeah. had some ground to cover. Mm -hmm. And this is not some stroll that 15, 20 minutes right, yeah. could have been well over two hours, yeah, depending on their pace. On the pace. <laughs> right? That these disciples are on the road, which is kind of cool because we get the impression, if we're paying close attention, that they had a lot of time right. to kick this stuff about Jesus around. Right, yeah, yeah, they would have had a long chat back and forth on their way. Uh, and they're also, it's, they're going home, right? Yeah. Probably. And mm -hmm. so they're headed back from where this big action had taken place. And they're leaving uh, this story behind. And they're shocked. And so, yeah, they would have lots of time to process it on that road. Yeah, and as they're processing, this person, right? this mysterious person comes along and sort of joins in the conversation, but they don't recognize who this is. Right, yeah, that's always an interesting point. And no one, we're not told why they don't recognize him, whether it was, you know, he looked different after the resurrection or, um, you know, there was an intentional, you know, this was all part of the way Jesus was hoping to interact with them. But that is interesting, why they didn't recognize him. Or maybe they were so sad and so yeah. so wrapped up in the grief that they're, you kind of can get inside your own head and not, not see what's around you. Yeah, what's right there in front of you. Right. Right? Yeah. Yeah, and we do get the impression that, that God, the Spirit, Jesus might have had there's something hand. at work. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Right. Might have had a hand in this as well, but still working mm -hmm. through all those practical ways that you, that you mentioned. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So they're going along and they're talking, and there's this wonderful line, are you the only stranger? <laughs> <laughs> right. They're saying this. Now, granted, they don't realize who it is, yeah. but here is the height of irony, right? Mm -hmm. They're speaking with the risen Lord, the <laughs> resurrected Jesus. Right? And they're saying, are you the only person that doesn't know what happened? Right. What do you think of this? I think it's, they're so surprised because this has probably been all anyone has been a buzz about. Right. Because it was a, a big event. It had a lot of attention as Jesus came into the city. Uh, just the fact that he had all of these people who were paying attention to him, whether for good or for ill. And for someone not to know is... It's just shocking for them. Yes. And it is kind of, that is an irony that, oh, what happened to me? Like, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why yeah. did you tell me? And I think this is a temptation that we Christians, even today, need to be aware of. Right. We are real, especially as preachers, mm -hmm. this is particularly humbling for us because we're all too ready to tell everybody about Jesus. Oh, yeah. And tell them exactly <laughs> what they need to know right. about this risen Lord. And these two disciples find themselves caught in that trap where they're trying to tell Jesus about Jesus. But right. the reality is, as much as we're going to talk about our Lord, we need to be willing to listen. Absolutely. And learn about our Lord before we make any grand 
proclamations. Right, yeah. Yeah. yeah, to take that time. But I do like here, when they finally get into the story of what happened, you know, mm-hmm. didn't, don't you know about this Jesus who was a prophet? And we had hoped, you know, he would redeem Israel. To me, when I was reading that and thinking about it, it is almost this moment of one of, we've had these moments from other disciples where they're able to say who Jesus is. Right. But in this telling of a story, going through all of these details step by step, it reminds me of what we do in our creed sometimes. Nice. When we say, this is what we experience and this is what we believe. And it's almost, for these two disciples, it's a moment of saying what they believe, like a creedal statement. Yes. But yeah. in this place of deep vulnerable, vulnerability. Right on. They're in this moment of grief. They're shocked that this person on the road doesn't know what they're talking about. And so they take the time to lay it out for this person, even with they express some disappointment, they express some sadness, sadness. Yeah. and they say, this is, this is what happened, this is what I know to be true. Yeah, and, and you're right, I had never thought about it in that way, yeah. but that one little word tucked away in there is really kind of important as we get a sense of where these disciples are at spiritually. Mm-hmm. They clearly said, we had hoped. We had hoped. Yeah, you're right. So there's, before they get to that statement about, you know, here's what happened, here are the details, mm-hmm. um, there is that, that mention of vulnerability, yeah. right? That they're not quite sure what's really unfolding in their lives as they hear these testimonies about others seeing the risen Lord. Right. Yeah. yeah. And Jesus doesn't waste any time after this. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> right? Coming right back at them. And um, there's some accusations of slowness of heart and Mm -hmm. so on and so forth. But now we see a transition in the lesson. Jesus, after some mild banter back and forth (laughs) and some leading questions, you know, now Jesus gets really engaged in, in the conversation and he begins to articulate what really happened. Um, and I, I, this is just a fascinating moment in Scripture, truly. It clearly says that he goes all the way back to Moses. Right. Now, can you imagine, right, a seven-mile hike with the risen Lord as he unpacks in detail... Every piece of Scripture that they would have been familiar with. Truly, though. Yeah. I mean, astounding, right? Mm-hmm. Can you imagine? Nope. No. <laughs> no, I can't. I yeah. think because it's, it is a, an amazing thing to know that these folks went through this experience of not only seeing the risen Christ, but to have that moment of teaching. Yeah. And we mentioned before, you mentioned about having to listen. And so they got, they got that gift, you know, right from the source. Um, yes. And so that's something we try to do too, is to take that advice from this process, this long walk that these disciples are going on. During the walk, you have to take some time to listen. Yeah, and to see all of the pieces of the puzzle come together. To hear Jesus himself say, here are the many ways that the prophets have pointed to this moment of redemption and salvation, Mm -hmm. have pointed to me being, right? Right. Uh, The hope of the world, and here I am. Yeah. Do you see how all this fits together? And, And clearly... They're moved, Mm -hmm. right? We find that out later on. But I'm still sort of intrigued that it had to be at some point during this explanation that one of these disciples looked at the other and said, this guy seems to know what he's talking about. (laughs) (laughs) He has some big credentials. He's the stranger that hasn't heard, and now he's unpacking the, the scriptures in great detail. Right. This is just, uh, I'm surprised they didn't raise at least a question about, where did you study? Did you, you know? Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. <laughs> that kind <Right>. of thing. <laughs> yeah, and I think the, this method of, there is a, a teacher, someone talking about uh, the Bible, faith, all of these uh, fantastic texts and stories and all of these facets of who Jesus is being told to the disciples. And I think it is important that there are two people there. So maybe they did get to bounce ideas off of each other. Nice, yeah. Yeah, because we can sit and we can study our our Bible. We can read it and read it and read it and read it. And we can have our own thoughts. But 
how wonderful is it to talk with a friend yeah. about those things and to see different people's insights and what these, what these things mean. That's really well said. Yeah. And I think you're right. And they can sort of come together as disciples and really discuss the meaning of the teaching. Mm -hmm. And then moving forward, it's not just one person's witness, but now there are two to carry the message Right? Yeah. It's almost like a husband and wife telling a story about their vacation from 83. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, and you know what I'm talking you about? You might miss some details. That's exactly yeah, right. Yeah. So the husband's kind of going along about the price of gas, and, and then right. the wife had to, you know, they interject. I remember that, you know, thing we actually did when we saw the sunset at the beach. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Right. So I think that's good. Now, they finally get to a place where their, their journey is wrapping up. There's this really cool moment where Jesus, and it, it says right in the text, that Jesus goes on ahead of them. Mm -hmm. And it's a nice reminder of Jesus' manners. And I'm not really kidding. Uh, it's a gesture wherein Jesus is indicating to these other travelers that he's not expecting anything else from them. Mm, yeah. And yet, they pursue him. Right. Yet they reach out to Jesus and invite, even though they don't know who he is, right? right? Invite him into their lives. Yeah. Please stick around. Stay with us, they say. And then the moment. Right, yeah. Yeah, the moment when they finally find themselves at table. Jesus breaks the bread, and in the breaking of that bread, they immediately recognize they him. They know who he is. What and do you he think? becomes the host in that. Right. Yeah. Right. And I think from that point forward, right, and there in this text, there in this post resurrection appearance, we get the sign and the signal that for a long, long time, we too will be able to encounter our risen Savior in the breaking of bread. So, a lot of sacramental mm -hmm. Eucharistic imagery right here yeah. in the story. Yeah, a beautiful way of yeah. knowing that God is present with us. Yeah. yeah. But then he's gone. See ya. <laughs> it vanishes, just like that. So what do you make of that? I, I don't know. I think that um, all of that time that Jesus was with them, they weren't sure what was going on. And then in that blip of certainty, things just kind of open up for them. And yeah. so um, Jesus has gone ahead of them. He sat with them. And he tells them that they can go on without him physically present in front of them, right. they're still able to go and share the good news, even without him standing right beside them. Holding, holding their hands, so mm -hmm. to speak. You're right. Um, so it is, it's a moment of empowerment, yeah. right? Now is your time mm -hmm. to proclaim. Uh, and I think the other piece of this is this beautiful indication to the rest of us that these profound encounters with our Lord um, are often fleeting. The mountaintop experiences that some of us have had in our own lives, despite popular opinion, they never last forever. Right. You can't stay there. You can't. I mean, you get a glimpse of the kingdom, and it's enough to sustain you, right? It's enough to fuel your spirit. But at the same time, you know that you cannot cling to it. Mm -hmm. You cannot hold on to it, but rather you continue to follow and hope that another time, right? right, along the way in the journey, you get another one of those encounters. But I think it's a blessing because it's a reminder to us that we're never in control of that. Right, you it's never always, know when that glimpse is going to happen. Yeah, it's always grace, right? It's always gift. Yeah. yeah. Good. Thank you so much. Amen, yeah. Wonderful stuff. Wonderful stuff. Very good. Our hymn of the day is the joyful Easter, this joyful Easter tide. It's ELW number 391 and found in your bulletin.
confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe, believe in, in one God, God the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came, came down, down from heaven, heaven was, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. For those whose hearts are fervent with love for your gospel, that they are empowered to tell the story of your love in their lives and to show hospitality in response to this love, Lord, in your mercy, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the diverse natural world, for jungles, prairies, forests, valleys, mountains, and for all the wild and endangered animals who call these spaces home, that they are nurtured and protected. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For broken systems we have inherited and that we continue to perpetuate, forgive us. Restrain the nations, from fighting over limited resources. Redeem us from the cycles of scarcity and violence. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. For all who call upon your healing name, give rest. Stay with us and walk with all those who are hungry, friendless, despairing, and desiring healing in body and spirit. 
especially those we now name within our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the faith forming ministries of this church, for those preparing for baptism, first communion, confirmation, and membership, for those who explore scripture, guide and inspire learners of every age and ability, Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Gracious Lord, we continue to pray for EMTs, EMS workers and first responders, for doctors and nurses and all those who are on the front lines. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you would grant all of these individuals your grace, your strength, and your presence. We pray for those who grieve, for those who battle with feelings of isolation. Gracious Lord, you know the needs in this time, and we trust that you are responding in meaningful and powerful ways. And so we continue to grant you our thanks, praise, and faithfulness. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Create in our hearts a yearning to rest in your promise of eternal and resurrected life. Give us thankful hearts for those who have died even as we look forward to the hope of new life with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. A friendly reminder, we do continue to need your financial support in this time. We appreciate all of your generosity and kindness and simply ask that you would continue to bless your congregation with that generosity in the days and weeks ahead. And we promise to be faithful stewards of those gifts. Let's pray our offering prayer together. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day, you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, Give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and, and forgive us our trespasses. trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Our sending song this day is Alleluia, Sing to Jesus, ELW, number 392.
Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Thanks for being with us this morning. Take care and be well. God bless you all. Hope to see you soon.